Look, Devils, j Dog back to attack. And I wanted to shoot this video real quick while I was on my mind because I just got back from the gym about an hour ago. And, you know, I don't talk to too many people at the gym, but, you know, I try to stay, you know, friendly and educable. And there's, you know, some people that know me and see me there for years and people pick my brains and ask me questions. And today a guy asked me a question. I'm like, you know what, I'm going to do a fucking video on this because uh, it's something I've told uh, as a recommendation to a lot of people. And it's, an, it's definitely an unpopular opinion that you basically will hear nobody else fucking saying, but it's 100% truth. And then it's this, so this guy, you know, I've, I've, you know, I've known him at the gym, I've seen him several times or whatever. And he's asked me, he's like, uh, tips for fucking uh, building shoulders, you know, training shoulder tips and like, because actually, uh, you can't tell this fucking shit ass camera and I'm covered up and stuff like that. Actually, my best body part is probably my shoulders. And it's kind of always has been, but they were always a little bit uh, unbalanced for years from my front delts and my side delts. And I'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, yeah, he was asking me like what I recommend. Yeah, yeah it's like, it's, you know, to get his shoulders up. And, you know, so he's kind of telling me his routine and stuff like that, his shoulder day and stuff, you know, like what he does, what what exercises he does, et cetera, et cetera. And so, yeah, my, uh, my tips for uh, shoulder training is this is actually going to sound super unconventional. And that is basically... Stop training shoulders. Like, don't have a shoulder fucking day. Uh, I'm not going to say don't do any exercises whatsoever for shoulders, but, like, literally to have a, a set shoulder day is absolutely fucking pointless and a waste of time, and you're actually doing more damage than good. Because uh, just, just think about it from a logical standpoint. Like, the shoulders are getting the most work indirectly, whether you like it or not. Because anytime you're doing any type of chest exercises, whether it be bench press, Incline bench press, any type of chest press, machine, whatever, free bar, machine, whatever, and any type of uh, chest fly, you're you're working the fucking shoulders, especially primarily the uh, the front delts. You know, the, the front delt here, you got the front delt, you got the side delt, and you got the rear delt. You know, three heads of the shoulder, right? So why in the fuck would you go and need another day? Like, they have no time to, to recover. And another thing is, too, is they're also getting worked when you're doing uh, any of your back movements. People think, oh, you know, shoulders don't get work doing back. Bullshit. Any fucking pull-ups, uh, pull-downs, rowing movements, your shoulders are 100% involved, especially like your rear delts and just the entire, you know, the shoulder in general. Like, if you don't believe me, if you ever get like a shoulder strain or an ache or whatever, go try to do some fucking pull-ups or do some uh, bent over barbell. Which you won't be able to do it. The pain will be too fucking excruciating because the shoulders are involved. So another thing, too, is the reason why I say don't have a fucking shoulder day. I'll get into what you should do for fucking shoulders. Is like it's only a matter of time before you're gonna have an injury or you're gonna need uh, shoulder replacements or shoulder surgery or a rotator tough rotator cuff tear. And if you talk to anybody at the gym long enough, you know anybody that's been training a lot, you know, a while, ten years plus, the number one biggest fucking injury or people like aches and pains people have is their shoulders. Think that's fucking coincidence? No, it's fucking it's common sense as the why, because it's getting it's it's overuse, it's over an over overuse injury. You're just wear and tear on them and. You keep in mind, like, you don't grow in the fucking gym. The training is just a stimulus to break down the, the tissue, and then it recovers, you know, from eating and sleeping and just, you know, build back build back stronger, right? So if you're constantly beating it up, you know, you have a chest day, right? You're hitting your fucking, that, that's hitting your shoulders. Then you have a back day, that's hitting your shoulders. You have a fucking shoulder day, that's hitting your shoulders. When the fuck are they going to recover? You see what I'm saying? Like, there's it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. So what I do, and um, this actually got my shoulders mostly proportions. What I had for years, and uh, and I, I did used to have a shoulder day, and I'll, until I you know wisened up and be like, this is fucking stupid, this is completely pointless, is uh, disbanded shoulder day, and like another thing, I, I disbanded before I even disbanded shoulder day. The, the most pointless fucking exercise you could possibly do just out the gate, don't, don't ever fucking do it, is front raises. So the front lateral raises, where you're like this with the dumbbell or with two two arms, you know. With a barbell, you have, that is the biggest fucking waste of time movement you're doing. Like, there's no real. Why in the fuck was your front delts need any work? They're getting shitloads of work from uh, all your uh, chest presses and uh, chest flies. Shitload of fucking work. Absolutely no reason to work it. And if you have, if you look around, pay attention to people that that actually work out. Make sure they actually have some goddamn muscle in their frame. And I fell victim to this. I'm still kind of, still a little bit of victim to it. Uh, but it took years to bring up, and I, it's a little more balanced now. Is if you look at anybody from the side, especially if they hit like a, a side chest pose or whatever, or if that like if they actually do hit a pose, or even just you know just standing relaxed on the side, you will see their front delt is much higher and more developed to their rear delt. The rear delt being really fucking shallow and like nothing there, and their or, or maybe if they do have a little bit of delt on the rear delt, their front will be way more overpowered. 
fuck does that tell you? What the hell are you going on there doing, doing like shoulder presses and stuff like that? Why? That's primarily, yeah, that's working the whole shoulder, but it's primarily working the front delt. Again, just overuse and you're just, you're, you're, it's making your shoulders in a sense look shittier because the fucking front delt is so overpowering and getting so big and the rear is, is, is nothing there or it's nowhere even near in comparison. So it's throwing things out of whack. So yeah, what I do for my training is I put, I, I do my, any of my shoulder work just on chest day. So what I do is, um, before I even do any chest training, I do rear, rear delts. And what I'll do is I'll go on a, a, a pec deck as a reverse pec deck. I'm sure you guys have those in your machine. And I'll do uh, three sets of 15 to 20 reps as my very first exercise. And then from there, I'll do uh, um, uh, uh, dumbbells, bent over dumbbells, you know, uh, ladders where you're bent over and you're, you know, you know, squeezing your rear delts. I'll do those. That's it. Just two exercises for rear delts. That's all I do. And then I do uh, my chest routine. And then the very last exercise, I do side laterals. So for the sides, that's it. And I'll either do those with dumbbells, three sets, or I'll do them on a cable. And on a cable, what I actually I've been doing on the cables uh, lately because the um, the dumbbells is it, it, I've kind of, kind of plateau with them for a while. So I switch back and forth. I run an exercise to the ground when it's plateau for a few weeks. I switch it over the other. What the uh, cable is really nice is you can't go nearly as heavy because the tension on it is is much, much heavier. It's got tension all the way through at the very bottom, mid-range, and at the top. And uh, what you, a little side tip for those when you do them, have the cable to like, uh, you do one arm at a time for the side laterals. Have the um, the cable, the pulley in your hand behind your back. Does that, does that make sense? So it's literally back, not in your front. It'll literally put more stress in your shoulder and go and just do your raises. You know, full range of motion, you'll get more of a stretch in the side delt and a way bigger contraction as opposed to putting it into the, the front of you where your front delt's going to actually come a little bit more into play. Those are literally the three shoulder exercises I do. Uh, training traps, that's also a fucking waste of time. Uh, sitting there just doing uh, shrugs and shit like that. All that You're just asking for um, an imp a neck impingement over time. That's a complete waste of time. Like, your traps are getting tons of fucking work in all your rowing movements, your back movements, and your... Um, and, and even like I said, your chest presses, they're, they're fully involved. There's no reason you don't, you don't need to isolate those. You're just, you're asking for an injury and look at it, anyone who's kind of a newbie beginner, like when they're actually making some gains, like let's say you see a total, total newbie teenager or whatever, you know, he's training hard and he's eating right. And he's making gains in three to four months, nine times out of 10, the most thing that stands out, if you see him in a tank top, the thing that seems like growing most is the traps and shoulders coincidence i fucking think not so what in the fuck do you need a goddamn uh tra and like upright rows too for traps that's like really hard on your connective tissue and joint joints like don't even do that that's you're just damaging yourself you're just literally causing damage just look at i'm not like a biomechanics expert but i know a little bit about biomechanics from you know just uh reading lots of books and studying the sport of bodybuilding and also talking to my uh, sports chiropractor from the little aches and pains and injuries so i've learned a lot but i by no means in a, as a I'm an expert on biomechanics but i know more than the average uh, bear and from a biomechanics um, standpoint, it's just a, it's a dog shit movement. Just just fucking don't do them. You're gonna fuck yourself up over time. Um, so like, if you're 20 years old, you're watching this, you're doing this. By the time you're 35, my age, 30, um, yeah, 35, 40 in that area, you guarantee you're gonna have fucking shoulder problems. Guaranteed. fucking team. So actually, yeah, my shoulders now. Ever since I corporate that, I cut my shoulder day out like an actual shoulder day. Probably I haven't done a shoulder day in about two years. The front raises I told you about, I cut those out about five years ago. Traps, doing those, I cut those out about three years ago. And my shoulders are better now than they ever were when I was training. They're bigger and they're more balanced. So, like, when you see me from the side, my biggest um, physique flaw from of, of an imbalance uh, perspective was literally from the side. You can see my front delt was fucking huge, always bulging out. But my my rear was so shallow and the, just barely anything there. Now it's my my front does still overpower my rear a little bit, but it's very very close. Like it's almost a fully cut off. Like I said, it's took me about two fucking years of completely cutting out shoulders in general and just doing um just doing them on the chest day and getting a little bit more blood in there, you know, at the end. So those are the tips. Yeah, you literally for shoulders, all you need to do is uh movements for uh rears and sides. That's all you need to do. Your fronts, you don't ever have to fucking worry about them. Um, and you don't need a set day. I mean, what the fuck? Some some side laterals, and even if you do, even if you do two exercises for sides, that's fine. Or and like I do two two for rear, just because rears are usually a weak body part in almost anybody. If you ever look at them, including myself. So uh, those kind of 
you know, I'd like to give those a little extra attention. So I had a little side uh, note for that too. I'll uh, keep the reps uh, relatively high, 15 reps on those. You don't want to be going super heavy to six to eight rep shit. That's that's not going to do fucking anything. That's it, the, it's, it's such a small muscle group and a small area you're trying to hit. You want to, uh, I mean, when I say high reps too, that doesn't mean train like an absolute fucking pussy. You still want to try to progress an overload, but you want to be getting like no less than 15 reps. So if you can get 15 real easily, and you're getting them and getting them and you're getting up to 20, then yeah, increase the weight. I'll always try to increase the weight and go as heavy as you can. But just don't be using a weight so heavy that you can only get, you know, 8, 10 reps. That's that's not going to be enough. You'll get more bang for your buck doing uh, 15, even, even 15 to 20 reps. Um, you could probably go a little bit higher. I mean, uh, John Meadows, rest in peace, who I've, he was a fucking gold mine of information on training. I've learned a ton from John. Is uh, he, he would even go as high when he said he'd try to bring up some of his clients. For like rear delts primarily, he would do 25, 30 rep sets and he knows to blow up. I actually, I probably need to maybe try that, but uh, I noticed the 15 to 20s, 15 to 20 rep range work real well for me. They have drastically come up, but it's, you know, it takes time. So, um, yeah, give that a shot, guys. If you have a shoulder fucking day, cut it out. There's absolutely no reason fucking for it. If you really just love doing like shoulder presses and shit like that, because I used to love doing um, dumbbell shoulder presses. I was, you know, seated dumbbell presses was my favorite for shoulders. I just enjoy doing them. You know, I was pretty strong on them too. I could do like the hundred pound dumbbells for like 10 reps. That was at my best. Uh, I doubt I could walk in the gym and do that now because I haven't done them in years. But within, if I started training them again, I mean, I'd easily be able to do like the eighties for like 10 to 12 easily. Um, that wouldn't be a problem at all. But to get back up to the hundreds for like 10 reps, I'd probably be able to get there in a month if I was training them. That's going in there fresh. But what I did do for a little bit because I still like doing them. And, I, and if you want to do this, I guess this would be fine. Um, just to kind of keep like maybe strength and mobility work in that, uh, in just that range of motion. If you are going to do it, do what I told you. Do, have your chest day and do those isolation exercises, shoulder ex isolation exercises, the sides and, and the rears. Do all that shit first and then do like whether you want to do a standing barbell or a seated barbell uh, press or a um, seated dumbbell press, which was my favorite. Do them at the very end of your workout. That'll be your last movement. You'll be way, way fucking weaker, and you won't be able to handle nearly as much weight. So you're you're taking a lot of that um, tension and weight off the actual joint. So like uh, for me, like like I said, I could when I was in fresh, just going in there, I was able to do the hundred fucking pound dumbbells. The most I was, the fucking most I was able to do at the end of my workout, I was using like the fifties. I think sometimes the sixties, and I was struggling to get ten. And it wasn't because the weight feels like normal. It's just like everything's so pumped and fatigued. Your triceps fatigued, your chest fatigued. Your everything's fatigued. You just did all your all your chest work, all your and then the side laterals. And so at the very end, you won't be able you'll be able to move just a fraction of weight. So let's say yeah, just do the fifty pound dumbbells for like three sets of ten. That's it. If you really want, I don't even do that anymore. But I did for a while for probably like my first after I cut out my shoulder day. I probably did it for the first four to six months when I was doing uh, just my sh little shoulder work on the um, chest day. And then I eventually come out. I don't even think this is fucking necessary, but I kind of enjoyed doing them. So I kept them in there for a little bit. Now I just don't give a fuck. So uh, I just don't do them at all. I don't think it's necessary. My shoulders have still have improved over the years. So uh, yeah, guys, that's a little fucking training tip for you. Like I said, uh, just thought of it because somebody was talking to me at the gym and the guy's like, oh shit, never thought about that. And it's like, it's funny because like, yeah, you never really hear anybody talk about this whatsoever. And uh, people are like, oh, well, pro bodybuilders just... Just trust me on this. You don't fucking need it. And then show me one goddamn pro. Like I said, you'll see like guys like Kevin Lavroni back in the day and stuff doing uh front raise front raises and stuff like that. And he had amazing shoulders, right? He would have had just as good as fucking shoulders if he didn't do that. And show me one goddamn pro that literally has shitty front delts, but like really developed sides and rears. I've never ever I've never forget even just pros. I've never even seen a fucking gym rat who has, oh man, his front delts are fucking way underdeveloped, but his rears are huge. I've never seen it. Why do you think that is? Because you're getting so much fucking indirect work, even whether you want to train them or not. From like all the movements like I just told you about. So completely unnecessary. Uh, just because a pro does it doesn't mean that it's right or optimal. They would have gotten just as good of results. Um, I don't want to say better results. They had tip top, you know, the primo physique. But if nothing else, same results with less uh, wear and tear on the uh, actual joint. And they wouldn't have any problems later on in life. And if they don't have them yet, they, they will. So you know, if nothing else, if you get the same fucking results, but oh, well, I enjoy doing it and I'm not getting any less results. Okay. That, that could be true. And that, that's best case scenario, but you are still taxing the shit out of the joint. And by age 40, 50, 60, you're, you're going to need a fucking shoulder replacement. Who the fuck wants to go through that? Not saying that I won't need a shoulder replacement or you won't just from all the uh, chest pressing and shit. You still might, but at least fucking prolong it as, as much as you can get as much 
you know, shelf life out of your uh, shoulders before you need to get that goddamn surgery, right? Prolong it until you're fucking 70, preferably, right? So, little tips and tricks there for you guys. Uh, let me know what you thought about it. Any other fucking questions, or especially with training or whatever, and non-training questions, send them my way, and I'll get them fucking answered. But that's just a little tip for you guys. It's on my mind. Uh, if you actually, if you are you guys that are into training shit, give it a fucking shot. Guarantee you'll fucking see a difference. Give it six months to a year, and I guarantee you, uh, your, your shoulder pains and aches will go away, and your shoulders will actually fucking start growing. Guarantee fucking T. Just watch. All right, guys, that's it for this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.